Well, once our boot image is all sorted out and duly customized, we have to think about building an install image. Now we can use an install image, such as the install.wim file that comes with the Windows 10 operating system, to install a stock, vanilla, plain operating system image. But the real power of tools such as the WADK comes into play when building a customized version of Windows that we set up to look just the way the IT and management folks at Globomantics want it to look. We can also beef up our custom install image with one or more applications that we use at the company. A thick image has all the applications that any Globomantics employee might use. A thin image has none of them, so they'll have to be installed after the OS deployment. And a hybrid image has the more common applications only. Well, after we've created an install image, we can use it in many ways. We can put it on custom media for deployment via DVD, for example, in connection with the DISM command, which includes a setting slash apply image that will apply an install.wim file to a computer, basically installing Windows. We can also import the install image that we've created into MDT, SCCM, and WDS for deployment using those tools if we choose to use them. Well, installing Windows 10 presumes some minimum hardware requirements on the target hardware, and these requirements haven't really changed much since Windows 8. A 1 gigahertz or faster processor, 1 gig of RAM for the 32-bit OS, and 2 gig for the 64-bit OS, 16 to 20 gig of disk space, again, based on the image bitness, uh, 32 or 64, a DirectX or newer display, DirectX 9 or newer display with a Windows Display Driver model driver, at least 800 by 600 resolution, although you'll need more than that to use some features, and extra hardware goodies if you want to run selected features such as Hyper-V or Device Guard and so forth. Now, let's chat for a moment about something called an answer file. An answer file is an XML text file with customization details that Windows Setup can use when installing Windows. Now, building install images usually starts with the creation of an answer file to automate the installation of a reference computer that we can then sysprep, capture, and clone. And the answer file is an optional step, but it does automate the reference computer build process and make it easy to modify down the road. We can also use answer files to automate the client-side OS deployment and perhaps even reduce the number of images that we may need to deploy. For example, the research engineers at Globomantics might need a Windows 10 install that is only slightly different than the production engineers need. And two answer files might be easier to create and deploy than two entirely separate WIM files. So let's take a quick look at the tool that is used in the WADK for creating answer files, the System Image Manager. So here's our workstation onto which we installed the WADK. And one of the components is the Windows System Image Manager, which we can invoke here from the icon we created on the start screen. So this is a rather complex looking tool. Uh, it's got several different window panes. Um, it's really not quite as bad as it looks, uh, but let's take a look at how you might use this tool to create an answer file. So the first thing we have to do is select a catalog file or a Windows image, right? So we can pick an install.wim from a standard Windows 10 DVD, and the system image manager will build a catalog file, or we can just pick this one that I've already built to save us some time. And that will populate this area here on the lower left, the Windows image area, with all the different items that can be tweaked and tuned and set in this answer file. It doesn't look like much until we expand it out and we see that, wow, we've got a lot of stuff here. We'll expand this so that we can see what's going on a bit more easily. Now, the next thing that we need to do is open an answer file. So we'll go to the file menu and we're just going to create a new one. We could open an existing one if we wanted. We'll build a new one, and that then populates this center pane, which is going to be indicative of sort of the cumulative settings that we add. And you'll notice that we've got various different steps here. These are called passes or configuration passes, one through seven, and they represent different steps in the 
process of the Windows Setup program when installing Windows. Well, we can't spend a lot of time here, but I'll just show you, for example, one thing that you could do here, and there's quite a wealth of settings that we could make. But if I scroll down here a little bit, I see some settings here for Internet Explorer. And so I can right click and I can say, all right, let's add these settings. There's only one of the configuration passes that is available here, the specialized pass. So we'll go ahead and add that. And we notice that we've got a new node populated in the answer file. And I can open this up and I also have a details area over here to the right where I can come in and I can make some settings in advance that pertain to Internet Explorer. Lots of possibilities here. I'll just take a peek at the home page here. Now you have an option to enter some information here. I'm not quite sure what format that might need to be. So there's a great feature built in in the WADK that lets me get context sensitive help. Almost a thing of the past in Windows, but not here. And that'll pull up this rather amazing help file that has a tremendous wealth of information about all the settings that we can make in advance in an answer file. And it will tell me about this home page setting, and it will show me what the resultant XML is going to look like in the answer file itself once I specify a URL. So once I specify the home page, I can then, if that's the only setting I need to make, come up here to the file menu and I can save that answer file out as an XML file that will then be referenced automatically by Windows Setup when it runs, for example, to install the reference computer that I plan to clone. So the idea of building a custom reference computer, which we can create with or without the help of an answer file, is to create a system that can be captured that has the features that we want. Adding applications, for example, saves time after the operating system deployment, and we can create different images for different departments, assuming that the differences are greater than could be easily managed with different answer files, which might be simpler to deploy. Now, the install image that I create doesn't need to be perfect, by the way. You can think of it as your IT department's attempt to create a great first draft of the perfect Windows 10 system. Group policy for domain members and Microsoft Intune for non-domain members can take the configuration process further post OS deployment. So to sum up the typical steps in creating a custom install image, build a reference computer, for example, with the help of an answer file, add applications as desired by installing them onto the reference computer, run sysprep, a tool that's been around for many years, to generalize the computer for cloning and strip out information that is specific to that particular system, such as the security identifier or SID. Then boot that reference computer to WinPE, Windows pre-installation environment, and then capture that computer, for example, with DISM, with the slash capture image parameter to take a snapshot of that reference computer and save it out to a new WIM file, for example, on a network share. And that becomes our new custom install image.